Okay, that's better. Hi, Mark. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Just looking at all the names. So blessed to see you all here today. I'm Marcel. For those of you who don't know me, the name looks like Marcel, but it's Marcel. And I'm happy to be here. Happy for another day, another Shabbat. From one Shabbat to another, we worship him and proclaim his goodness and his mercy and his love. Hallelujah. So I want to read to you a Psalm in um, 139, just a portion. It's familiar to you, but it's a good one. I'm starting in verse seven. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle on the farthest limits of the sea, even there. Your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. So what do you see when you look around? Do you see all the darkness? It's easy to just focus on that, but I don't think as believers we are to stay there long, long enough to be aware and to pray and to act when we can, but to be light ourselves and to focus on the light. Amen. To his, yes, to bring his love to a dark world. So Father, we love you so much. We love you with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our mind. And let us be a people that not only speak of you and tell you how much we love you, but that we show forth the mighty works that our master Yeshua did, Father, because he said he was going to you and that we would do greater things. Let it be so in our fellowship, in our families, wherever we are. Thank you for this sacred time. Thank you for your presence. We know that you are here. In Yeshua's name, amen. Heisen. We hear the meditation. Our father Yahweh tells us, keep justice and do right. For soon Yeshua T, my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. Blessed is the one who holds this fast, who keeps the Shabbat, not profaning it and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let not the joined stranger say Yahweh will surely call me out of his people. Let not the maimed say, I am a dry tree. For Yahweh says to all those who keep my Shabbatot, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give a name better than sons and daughters, an everlasting name. Even strangers who join themselves to minister to Yahweh and love my name. Everyone who keeps the Shabbat and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my set-apart mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. For mine will be a house of prayer for all peoples. The Pledge of Allegiance. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the Torah. I pledge allegiance to the Torah. Of the kingdom of the beloved son. Of the kingdom of the beloved son. And to the divine theocracy for which it stands. And to the divine theocracy for which it stands. One Eloa, one, one nation, Eloah, one nation, one head, one head, one faith, one attitude, one goal, one faith, one attitude, one goal. 
one baptism, one communion. One baptism, one communion. Ordained by Yahweh, the creator. Ordained by Yahweh, the creator. My nation is indivisible. My nation is indivisible. With divine liberty, equitable justice. With divine liberty, equitable justice. And eternal life for all. Amen. And eternal life for all. Amen. We bless Yahweh and hear the call shofar. Baruch atah Yahweh, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzavanu lishmoa, kol shofar. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, sovereign of the universe, who sanctifies us by your mitzvot and calls us to hear the Kol Shofar. <laughs> We bless Messiah. Baruch atah Yahweh Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu et derek ha-Yeshua, b'mashiach Yahashua. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, sovereign of the universe, who has given us the way of escape in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Ushavtim hayim mayim besesomi me'ene ha-Yeshua. So with joy, we draw living water from the springs of deliverance. Hallelujah. We bless each other. On that day, Jacob blessed his grandchildren. He said, in time to come, the people of Yisrael will use you as a blessing. They will say, may Elohim make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. Yusumka Elohim ki Ephraim viki Manasseh. May Elohim make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. Yusumek Elohim ki Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Vilea. May Elohim make you like Sarah, Ribka, Rachel, and Leah. Yivarekaka Elohim vishmareka. Yaher Elohim panavaleka vikuneka. Yise Elohim panavaleka. Vesleka shalom. May Elohim bless you and watch over you. May Elohim shine his face toward you and show you favor. May Elohim be favorably disposed toward you and grant you peace. We enter the set-apart home. Ma tovu, o halika Yaakov, mishkenoteka Israel. Vani bero chazdeka, avo vitecha, eshtaka ve el hekol, kachika bihirateka. Yahweh ahavti meon biteka umkom mishkan kevodeka, vani eshtaka ve ved. The Ekrea Evraka Lifne Yahweh Osi, Vani Tefalati Lacha Yahweh et Ratzon Elohim, Irav Hazdeka, Anine Beemet Yisheka. How lovely are your tents, O Yaakov, your dwelling places, Yisrael. Through your abundant favor, we will enter your home. In awe, we will bow down within your set-apart sanctuary. We love the home you live in and the place where your radiance resides. We will fall and bow, bending the knee before Yahweh, our maker. May our prayers to you be at the appropriate time. In your abundant righteousness, answer us with the truth of your rescue. We favor kin and Talmudim. 
May it be your will, Yahweh our Elohim and Elohim of our foreparents, that you show favor to us and all our friends and relations, and that you grant us and all in Yisrael a good and long life, that you remember us with good thoughts and blessings, that you consider us with your salvation and your compassion, that you bless us with great gifts and favors, that you make our households complete, and that you cause your presence to dwell among us at all times. Privilege us to train up our youth, proselytes, disciples, and all Talmudim in wisdom, understanding, in loving and revering Yahweh, in belonging to Yeshua, the anointed one, and being committed to him. Let them be people of truth, set apart for Yahweh to illuminate the world with Torah and Tov mitzvot, doing all in the service of Yahweh. Hear our supplication right now and give us the same favor as our spiritual mothers and fathers. Cause our light to shine as a reflection of your face for all ages, so that all Yisrael might be saved. Amen. We recite Shem Vahatapta. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ekar. Baruch Shem Kevod, Malkuto Leolam, Vahed. Hear, O Yahweh. Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim. Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his esteemed kingdom forever. Ve'ahavta et Yahweh Eloheka, bekol levavka, uvkol nashika, uvkol meodeka, ahava loreaka kamoka. Ve'hayud ha'devarim ha'enle, asher anochi, betzavka ha'yom levivaka. Vishinam tam leveneka, vedibartabam, vishivtika, vivetika, uvlektika vaderek, ushakbika, uvkumika, ukshartam leot al yalika, vihayu le totofot bien einika, uketav tam al mezuzot, beteka uvishoreka. And you will love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And you will love your neighbor as yourself. Let these words that I command you this day be upon your heart. You will teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk upon the path, and when you retire, and when you arise and you will bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes, and you will write them on the doors and gates of your house. We bless the blessed Barku. Barku et Yahweh HaMavorak, Baruch Yahweh HaMavorak Le'olam Vahed. Bless Yahweh, the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it set apart. Six days will you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahweh, your Elohim. In it, you will not do any work. For in six days, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. That is why Yahweh blessed the seventh day and made it Kadosh. Speak also unto the children of Israel, saying, Above all my Shabbatot you will keep, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, so that you may know that I am Yahweh who sanctifies you. The Israelites are to observe the Shabbat celebrating it for the generations to come as an enduring covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Yisraelites forever. For in six days, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he abstained 
from work and rested. And it will come to pass that from one to new month to another and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says Yahweh. Yadid Nefesh. Soulmate, loving parent, compassion's gentle source, take my disposition and shape it to your will. Like a darting deer will I rush to you. Before your glorious presence humbly will I bow. Let your sweet love delight me with its thrill, because no other dainty will my hunger still. How splendid is your light illumining the world. My soul is weary, yearning for your love's delight. Please, good El, do heal her. Reveal to her your face, the pleasure of your presence bathed in your grace. She will find strength and healing in your sight. Forever she will serve you, grateful with all her might. What mercy stirs in you since days of oh, old Ellie? Be kind to me, your own child. My love for you requite. With deep and endless longing, I yearned for your embrace. To see my light in your light, basking in your grace. My heart's desire, find me worthy in your sight. Do not delay your mercy, please hide not your light. Reveal yourself, beloved, for all the world to see, and shelter me in peace beneath your canopy. Illumine all creation, lighting up the earth, and we will celebrate you in choruses of mirth. The time, my love, is now. Rush, be quick, be bold. Let your favor grace me in the spirit of days of old. We minister shalom, shalom aleichem. Shalom aleichem, malachay hashaharei, malachay elyon. Mi melek malachay hamlakim, akadosh baruch hu. Bokem le shalom, malachi ha shalom, malachi el yon. Mihi melek malachi hamlachim, hakadosh baruch hu. Bahuni le shalom, malachi ha shalom, malachi el yon. Mihi melek. Malchei hamlachim, hakadosh baruch hu. Shalom be yours, ministering malachim, malachim of the El El Yom, coming forth from the sovereign of sovereigns, the set apart one. Blessed is he. May your coming forth be in shalom, malachim of shalom, malachim of the Most High coming forth from the King of Kings, the set-apart one, blessed is he. Bless us with shalom, malachim of shalom, malachim of the Most High, coming forth from the King of Kings, the set-apart one, blessed is he. We give thanks and praise. We praise you, Father. We continue in our thanks and our praise lifting you up, thanking you for all of your goodness and mercy. Does anyone have anything they want to testify about today or share? Please open up your mic. Yes. Our brother, uh, Chris Plour, who has been really with the Yahad for a long time, but in kind of in the background, he has had a heart attack this week and he i suspect he's still in the hospital today after a couple of uh, catheterizations i understand oh Anne's here understand that he had a problem with the widow maker and so 
keep him in your prayer this coming week. That is Chris Plurd. Thank you. I want to give Thanksgiving to the Father because I know people prayed for me. I um, had a bad uh, lab report and they redid the blood uh, the next day. And, and there was a lot of people praying for me. And you know what? Um, the doctor, um, his assistant called me up and said, look, I don't know what happened the first time around, but uh, your second one is much better. So I tell you, I can't tell you how much of a relief that was. Um, the prospect of, you know, uh, dialysis <laughs> was not a nice prospect at all to think about. And so the father really delivered me, and I'm just thankful for that. Thanks, BDR. Yeah. Brother Emerson, you've always got something to tackle about. What do you have today? Uh, well, I'm, well, it, I guess this is a prayer request because I have a neighbor that's really private. And so uh, his and his uh, girlfriend came out to tell us that he is already like on stage four of cancer and he's refusing the chemotherapy. And then my wife already had someone in the family that just a couple weeks ago passed away from chemotherapy i mean uh from stage four cancer and he went the chemotherapy route so maybe this guy she's his girlfriend's trying to get him to do natural stuff so maybe there's some hope there but the hard part is like i want to go visit him but he's super private and he doesn't like he seems pretty anti-social so i just pray the heavenly father gives me the opportunity to show him some love and and let him know that i'm praying for him and uh, and I hope you all will, too. Well, I understand chemotherapy doesn't help your chances at all. Uh, doctors are usually right. going to say that, well, that's all we can do. But I believe that he's going to be taking the right path. However, he needs to have some social connection, especially during this time. Because if you've got stage four cancer, he's going to go. Unless there's yeah, a miracle there. healing. Mm -hmm. So pray that the, the rock leads me there so I can just show him yeah. love. and Will do. Craig, how about you? Shabbat shalom. Shalom. I'd like to ask for prayers for my family and my daughters. I have three. We have three teenage daughters. Our oldest just turned 18. Um, two of them are interested in, we don't really allow dating per se, but are interested in involved with friends with uh, boys that um, come from Torah, um, Torah pursuant families. Our oldest, however, is not. She is currently interested in a, a very worldly boy. So um, we've had some difficulties and and um, this week with the, the, um, the Hillel Calendar's Pesach going on in town, um, all the said families are in town. So um, we don't want to have any uh, grandbabies made um, during this time. So, um, <laughs> uh, we, so we need to be on guard and um, that and uh, just praising him for for all that he's done um he's just incredibly good for us and good to us and and our story is just so filled with amazing uh moments where it's all him and, and we're just so thankful to be able to remember those times and, and you're in cleveland tennessee isn't that the capital of hebrew roots yeah we are we are in cleveland tennessee i had a, a friend from um indiana down and he said that jacob's tent had over 1500 people mm -hmm. at their sale so wow yeah and then i know best shalom has got probably close to 500 people at theirs or had 500 people or so so there's a cleveland is a, a very busy time town right now with messianics and and uh, the father just has us, you know, we, we sit at home alone, so, <laughs> which is okay, too. Now we can just get those people on the right calendar. We'll, we'll do fine. On the right, a lot of things. 
Yeah, right. I'll drive. I'll drive to fellowship with you, Craig. I'm just up the road. Yes, we we have an open house. We have um um uh, a family um with a, a mother and, and son that come over and join us. They they came over last night and fellowshiped with us, and um, we love them very much. And uh, they both struggle with anxiety pretty hard, so big groups and stuff aren't going to be conductive to them anyways. But um, we're we're grateful for the people that we do know and that love us, and we love them for sure. Wonderful. I sure miss that. Any more? Okay. Um, we hear the word and testimony. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Let the prophets prophesy. The words of the prophet. Whenever the ark set out, Moshe said, Arise, O Yahweh, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee before you. Amen. We have a, a great evangelist and prophet in here today. Oh, thank you, Marcel. That was a great introduction. Great service so far. See, that's Gregory Holzapple. Did I get that right, Gregory? I think so. And he, uh, what impressed yes. me about his biography was that he's, he's steeped in military culture. And he's been all over the place with the military as well as now he's going all over the place with the word, with the Torah and the word of Elohim. So it's a real privilege to have you here today, Gregory. I hope this won't be the last time. Right. <laughs> we're trying Thank to be you. nice to you. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're going to try to be nice to you. Don't throw too many rocks. Just no stoning. <laughs> All right. Well, he's the prophet of the day. So, Is there a possibility we could see you, Greg? Is your camera working? There we go. All right. We'll get started. I'm trying to go over... Know your enemy. Know your enemy. So, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of the Messiah, who is the image of Elohim, should shine into them. Second Corinthians 4 and 4. So, what we see here is many times we have an enemy. But many times we are just told that or we're looking for one enemy. You know, we, we all believe that we have one enemy or, or I should say we believe what we are told. So a lot of times we have these things. We are told these things and we just believe what we're told because we only have one enemy. So what I'd like to go over today is that what we're really worried about is that what we are fighting against because we also have ourselves. we have many things but let's go through the scriptures and see what the scriptures say behold i give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you luke 10 and 19 so we have the power to tread over everything. So what is the disconnect? What is the enemy that we are don't have power over? What is the enemy that continues to keep hurting us or messing with us or making us upset, depressed, all these different things that happen to us? Let's go to Isaiah 54 and 14, and you will establish a foundation of righteousness. You will be far from the oppression. You will certainly not be afraid. You'll be far from terror. It will certainly not come near you. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Psalms 11 and 4. So what we see many times is we have an enemy, but a lot of times that enemy is us. A lot of times we have to fight against 
what we have in front of us. And then we have to learn which enemy is trying to take us down. Exodus 15 and 6, your right hand, Yahweh, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, Yahweh, has dashed the enemy in pieces. So we have to see that our enemy, when it is the enemy, when it is fallen, when it is de demonic, then we have to go to Yahweh and we have to go in prayer and we have to do things to fight against that enemy. When it's ourself, we obviously have to stop being prideful and doing the things of ourselves and doing the things that we know we shouldn't do. If we go to Numbers chapter 10, and when you go to war in your land against the adversary who attacks you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets and you shall be remembered before Yahweh, your Elohim, and you shall be saved from your enemies. So again, what we see here is we are saved from our enemies when we do what Yahweh tells us to do. So as long as we're doing what Yahweh tells us to do, then we have that salvation. We have a way away from our enemies. It's when we do other things and we're not listening that we have problems. Judges 16, 23. Now the lords of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to rejoice, for they said, our God has given Samson an enemy in our hands. So what we see here is we have multiple, multiple enemies. We have multiple ones that are saying they are our enemies. So what we have to do is go and say, which enemy am I fighting against? Which one am I looking for? Because if we're not careful, we have an enemy. And it's amazing that we are the only ones, or I say we, but religion, I would say, is the only one that doesn't go against and fight against the enemy tactfully. We just don't seem to know how to fight against the enemy the way we should. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is when you're in the military or when you're in somewhere else, you know your enemy. Russia, we know Russia. We know they got T-72 tanks. We know they have these MiG jet fighters. We know this. We have even know their leaders. But for some reason, the disconnect becomes when we are into religion that we don't think we have to know our enemy. We don't need to know because many times we just think that we are fighting against one. We think it's Hasatan or Satan, right? We, because we're told these things. So what we end up doing is we're either only fighting ourselves or we're fighting one enemy. But when we go to scriptures, we clearly see that the enemy and his tactics and many other enemies are against us. So a lot of times we're fighting kind of a backwards battle, a battle that we don't know how to win. But yet he tells us that you have power to win these, these battles. So definitely when we see we're fighting against demonic or the fallen or any of these identities, we definitely have the power, he says, we have it to tread upon them. So we must use that scripture. We must use and what we have, sometimes fasting, praying. Let's go on. Psalms 41 and 11. By this, I know that thou favorest me because mine enemy doeth not triumph over me. So we know what we're doing when the enemy is not triumphing over us when we're not being totally defeated. So as long as we are doing what we're supposed to do, then we won't run into this defeat. We won't run into these things that we see a lot of the world happening. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and fear is on every side. 
Jeremiah 6 and 25. <clears throat> we know that there is enemies all over. There's enemies everywhere. But a lot of these enemies, what we have to understand is even when it is a person, we are not fighting against that person. We are not fighting against them. We're fighting against usually the enemy, the one that's telling them are not the so. And that's where we come up with, if your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink for you will be heaping burning coals on his head. So what do we find out? We find out that many times what we're doing is we are loving the enemy because the enemy is our brother. So that's where a lot of people say, well, I don't understand. I have to love my enemy. I don't have to, you know, I don't understand if I'm supposed to be fighting against my enemy. Then how do I love my enemy? Love my neighbor as myself. How do I love my neighbor if he's my enemy? So the disconnect is the ones that we are fighting against, the ones that are really spiritually fighting against, are the demonic, are the fallen, are the ones that are in that way. So when we go on, we learn that our neighbor, our brother, our sister, all those are not particularly our enemies only until a certain point in time. And usually, if we can use our love and kindness, we can learn, we can show, we can teach them on how not to be so harsh and not so hateful. But even if not, then Yeshua says, love them anyway, right? Forgive them for they know not what they do. Lamentations 1 and 7, Jerusalem remembered in the days her affliction and of her miseries, all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy, and none did help her. The adversary saw her and did mock her Sabbath. So we see the same thing today that people getting mocked and getting hurt and getting talked about because we don't do what they do. We don't do it the days they do it. So a lot of times we still see the same things going on today that we see all through scriptures that people are making fun and talking about doing things that again, Yeshua said, forgive them for they know not what they do. So the men and women are only our adversaries are only our enemies until they see the light, until they know better. And then hopefully they will not be our adversaries anymore. Then Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. So right here, he didn't put a gun to his head. He didn't tell him he must do this. But a lot of times what the enemy will do is just say, this is the way it's going to be and this will help you out. This will make you feel better. And a lot of people do what he says. They don't have to. We don't have to cuss and fight and argue and do the terrible things that we do, but yet when an enemy, someone whispers something, tells us something, a lot of times our emotions, and that's where the love comes in. That's why he continues to say, love your enemy, love them, because a lot of times our emotions will go exactly the wrong way. Now, another one here, certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which ye have known not. Now, there is 109 verses on enemy, I believe of which 40 some are about Hasatan or Satan, and there are 16 on Belial. And it's amazing that he is actually another fallen or another demon, another one, that is considered our enemy that we see through the scriptures of what he is and what he does and how he does that. So we have to be very careful with all the enemies that we do have instead of wasting all of our time on our friend at work or the one that hates us or the one that don't like us. 
why do they not like us? Is it because of our laugh or because we're happy, because of what we're doing or because of something else? Second Corinthians 6, 14, 15, do not be bound together with unbelievers for what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness or what harmony has the Messiah with Belial or what has a believer in common with the unbeliever? So again, that Belial keeps coming up 16 different times as an enemy, as an adversary, as someone who is obviously against us. So we do not love the world. We do not love their ways. But again, we have to identify, is this from a person or is this from someone telling the person? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So clearly we see it's not the people. It's what the world is doing, the riches of the world, the lust of the world, the different things of the world that makes us want the things of the world, that tempts us, or that the enemy, our enemies can tempt us with and say, well, this is what you need. This is what you like. This is what you really prefer to have instead of what you're doing. Do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with Elohim? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Yahweh or an enemy of Elohim. So we have to be very careful when we become like the world when we let ourselves become more and more like the world because now according to scripture we are becoming an enemy of the most high so we don't want to do that O oh, elohim whom i praise do not stand silent and the law of while the wicked slander me and tell lies about me they surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason i love them but they try to destroy me with accusations, even as I am praying for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. So we see what they're doing, what they're trying to do, and exactly how they're trying to do it. But what we have to do is continue in that love and give it to Yahweh. Just like the prayer there, just give it to Yahweh. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. And this can come to be a kind of hard thing, really, especially in the world we live in, that we find out that we can be hateful, we can be argumentative, we can do things like they do, and then it becomes a competition, and then we want to go and do and beat them at their own game, right? So we don't want to do that. We don't want to be fighting with them and playing chess with them and and you know i can i want to get the last word we just want to love kind and know what we're doing the 72 returned with joy and said yeshua even demons submit to us in your name he replied i saw satan fall like lightning from heaven i have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 17 through 20. So what we're going to do is rejoice that Yahweh has given us this power. We rejoice that he has let us know of our enemy, the ones that we seem to fear the most we're not really worried about that much we're not really worried about them because we have more power than they do through yeshua through yahweh so at the end here but i say unto you which here love your enemies do good to them which hate you so we have to understand what he's saying again we can't love the devil right we don't love him we don't care for him because of what he's done so he's talking about clearly the ones that hurt us our loved ones are ones that we would never believe would treat us this way 
Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And to him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take away thy coat also. So what we have here is exactly what he tells us to do. We are believing in him. We are doing what he says to do. We are just keeping the faith of what he has told us to do. So all we have to do is keep believing what he says to do, but we have to know that our enemy, number one, is usually self. Our self-wanting, even self-righteousness, self, different things. Number two would be the world, lust, and evil, which again, that kind of points back to self if we accept the world and want to be like them and do what they want to do. Number three would be Hasatan, the devil. And a third, we seem to forget that it says a third fell with him. And then we find in the different books, like the um, Dead Sea Scrolls and the scriptures there that clearly Belial talks about the army of Belial, the sons of darkness, hordes of Moab, Ammon, the Philistines, and Asher. So we know that that's a real thing because the scriptures obviously tell us what to do right here. So the enemies we are to love would be obviously our brothers and sisters the ones that we are talking to, the ones that we run into every day, the ones that we have a right, if you will, to say, Yahweh loves you, I love you, to help one another out, to do all we can, and to show the world, even though it's dark and a dreadful place, and it seems to get worse, that we can put a smile on our face, and we can go to town, and we can give them all the love and all the help that they can need. And if nothing else, we can say, I'll pray for you and I will do all I can for you and I will petition for you to the Most High. And that's all that I have for now. Yahweh bless. Thank you very much for having me, for listening. Um, Yahweh bless. Shalom. Excellent job. Thank you so much, uh, Gregory. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Will you come back sometime? Sure. I'd love to come back. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Heisen? When the ark rested, Moshe said, Return, O Yahweh, to the ten thousand thousands of Yisrael. We pray together. Our Father in Avinu Shubashamayim Yikadashimka Vyit Barek Melkutka Retsonka Yihei Asui Bashamayim Uvaretz Vititain lachmenu teradit umikhao lanu, kitotenu kasher machnu mochulim lachutim lanu, vial tivienu lide niseon, vishom renu mikora. Amen. Our Father in the sky, may your name be sanctified, may your reign be blessed. Your will be done in sky and land. Continually give us our bread. Forgive us our sin debts as we forgive the debt of those who sin against us. Do not bring us into the nets of a snare and protect us from the evil one. Amen. Amen. We minister shalom. Tzikim l'shalom, malachi ha-shalom, malachi e-yon. Mi melek, malachi ha-mlachim, ha-kadosh baruch hu. May your departure be in shalom, malachim of shalom, malachim of the el-el-yon. 
coming forth from the sovereign of sovereigns, the set apart one, blessed is he. We sing the song of peace. Shalom, my friends. Shalom to you now. Shalom, Shalom. my friends. May he always bless you. Bless you, bless you well, my, my friends. friends. In all your oh, living and through and your loving, Yahweh be with you. Shalom. 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 Shalom, Yahweh, Yahweh be your shalom. <laughs> the leader blesses. Yivarekka Yahweh be Shmurekka. Yaher Yahweh panavelka be kunekka. Yise Yahweh panavelka. Vyasem Malika Shalom Bashem Yahashua Moshiach Sar Shalom Amen. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yahshua Hamashiach. Prince of Peace. Amen. 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 Service is finito, but I have a few announcements here.